This is the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2018, and it's the Group B game between Australia and Nigeria. Well, we've got last year's uh, FIBA Women's Afrobasket uh, champions, Nigeria. They didn't lose a game. Uh, they have made it to the World Cup, and they are going to take on one of the powerhouses, Australia. Uh, this is what we see in Group B today. Uh, it will be followed by Turkey and Argentina. And again, the Group B you see in the FIBA uh, Women's World Rankings. Uh, presented by Nike, Australia number four, then Turkey at seven, Argentina are number 15, and Nigeria number 34. Uh, but sometimes the uh, rankings don't tell the whole story in terms of uh, chopping and changing players, bringing newcomers in. And I've got a feeling Nigeria might be a little bit better than people are anticipating. I'm Jeff Taylor, joined by Shona Thorburn. And... Uh, Shona, former Canada International, Canada Olympian, here to bring the insights uh, throughout this tournament. And Shona, welcome to Tenerife. It's not a bad place to have a World Cup, is it? It's not. Beautiful weather. You know, uh, the Spanish Federation's going to have, have put on a wonderful event. We're in the main gym here, and it's absolutely gorgeous. And, you know, speaking about this game, we've been talking about Obviously, in the prestige stakes, uh, this Australia team has won the world title back in 2006, and they've always been there or thereabouts. And Nigeria really haven't been on the radar as frequently. So, in terms of tradition, this is a no-brainer. This is an easy win for Australia, but, you know, we've been talking about this Nigeria team, how they can be dangerous, especially with some of the players that they have on this roster. Exactly, and the fact that they're unknown is sort of an advantage for them. Uh, you know, there's not a lot of scouting. They haven't had a ton of exhibition games leading up to this. You know, they, they went undefeated at AfroBasket. They had a pretty big win over Senegal to win that tournament. So they're good. You, they brought in a new coach recently, which I'm not sure if that has boosted the dynamic or the morale on the team or, uh, you know, caused a little bit of confusion. I guess we're going to find out. And like I said, they are unknown. They're athletic. When you kind of do your research about this team, they have some women who have have uh, pretty good CVs already, and, and they're young. And guess what? We watched a little bit of practice yesterday, and man, can they get the ball up the court very fast. So look for them to fast break and maybe try and tire out Australia. And really, you know, the fact that they start as the underdogs, no pressure. Exactly. You know, you, you always you talk about that being an underdog. You have nothing to lose. So you just get to go out and you just get to play. You don't have pressure. And guess who has pressure? Australia. And it's pressure that we've seen uh, in some ways. It's almost been too big the last couple of years. I mean, we saw Australia go with high hopes to the Olympics. And uh, they, they slipped up in the finals. And then last year at the FIBA Asia, FIBA Women's Asia Cup in Bengaluru, India, you know, we thought Australia would finish on the top of the podium. They got to the final and they lost to Japan. Obviously, different players, different systems, uh, different coaches. In, in fact, different coaches all three years. Sandy Brandella was the head coach of Australia, uh, but she wasn't there. Yeah. She was coaching the WNBA, and her husband, uh, Olaf Long, was the head coach. So anyway, we'll talk more about that. Uh, but before we go any further, we're gonna have a pause in the commentary for the playing of the national anthems.
Please remain standing for the national anthem of Australia. It's always a great part of the game for me to hear the national anthems, and it just reinforces how this is a national team competition coming out playing for your country, and uh, obviously a lot of interest back home in both of these places, Australia, where the game is huge in both uh, men and women, and also Nigeria. Well, referees for today's game, you know, Yilmaz, the crew chief, and you see, Senal Benke and Alexis Mercado Pacheco from Puerto Rico, Turkey, India, and Puerto Rico. And we'll also get a look at the rosters uh, coming up here for both of these teams in the starting fives. And remember, Australia qualified by reaching the final last year. Well, they did well at the Asia Cup. Here's Nigeria. Um, Promise Amukamara, keep an eye on her, but really uh, Evelyn Akator, and we're curious um, about uh, number 24, Sarah Emopio. Now, Evelyn Akator, I mean, her numbers speak for themselves last year. Yeah, they do, and you know, she's experienced. She, she played you know, her last couple of years at Kentucky University. Uh, was drafted third overall in the WNBA in 2017 to the Dallas Wings. So uh, she has skill, let's just put it that way. Skill and I'm guessing a little bit of power to her game. For Australia, no Jenna O'Hay today. She's got a calf injury. They've, they've had some injury issues. Um, Beck Allen, Katie Ebsery, Alana Smith, where she was impressive last summer. Uh, Tessa Levy's back because of injuries to, you know, they've had to chop and change. Kayla George still in this team. Sandy Whitcomb, the coach Sandy Brondello, one of the all-time greats in Australian women's basketball. Liz Cambage, again, her numbers speak for themselves. And also what she's done this past season in the WNBA was just quite phenomenal. It really was. You know, she she led the WNBA, WNBA in scoring. So that's no, that's that's, no mean feat. That exactly. You know, she had that uh, famous 53-point game. I mean, that, that's just incredible. So yeah, it, clearly she can score. And she's going to be a, a, a tough load for Nigeria. I think, you know, if you're Nigeria, how do you try and take a player like Liz Cambage out of the game. You know what? I would try and run on her and get her into foul trouble because we have seen her get into foul trouble before. So uh, that's what I would try and do if I was the coach of Nigeria. I would say, you know what, guys? Try and attack her. Try and get her frustrated and try and get her a couple fouls early so we, Australia has to take her out. Well, time really flies as we look at the uh, end of the pregame here, the final 30 seconds, you know, talking about Cambys, remembering how she burst onto the scene back in 2010 in the Czech Republic. And there's Otis Hughley Jr., the coach of Nigeria. And um, it's just incredible how eight years have, have gone past. What's happening? <laughs> And, and, you know, she's still so young, which is what's scary. Is. So, uh, you know, this is actually her first World Cup. She had that horrible Achilles tear. And what about Sandy Brundello? I mean, is she going to fear 
uh, say from how uh, Brendan Joyce used uh, Liz Campage at the Olympics? I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? Well, uh, you know, if you look at her Olympic stats, she averaged yeah. around 23 points again in Rio, but they had a very disappointing finish. I mean, they didn't make the podium for the first time in, in a while at a major uh, international event. So, uh, you know, I think uh, Coach Rondello is kind of in a tough position as well because she hasn't really been around this team a lot. Now, obviously, she's experienced. She knows the game. She knows the players. But, uh, you know, she spends the majority of the summer in Phoenix coaching the Phoenix Mercury. She's the head coach of the Phoenix Mercury. I know they had a training camp out in Phoenix. She also spent a training camp in February with them in Italy. So she has been around, obviously, but she has to really rely on her assistants uh, because they're the ones who have sort of been running this team so far this summer. You know, the last World Cup, Australia under coach uh, Brendan Joyce really gave the USA their toughest game, and they finished third. They blew out Turkey, uh, and that was without Cambridge. Yeah. And they brought in Marion Tolo, who was fantastic. Um, and then when they had Cambridge at the Olympics, so sometimes you can have, like, the, the best player, but sometimes it just doesn't work. But anyway, we are expecting big things from Liz Cambridge in Australia. Alan Talbot, Cambridge, Kayla George, and Ebsery in that starting five for Australia. And jumping center is going to be Aisha Muhammad against Cambridge. And interesting that she's jumping center and not Akatur. Ilonu, Kalu, also in that starting five. And Sandy Brondello is like, come on, we've gotten this far. Now, why are we having a delay right before the tip? A little bit of a confusion with the uh, numbers and who was, uh, you know, coaches have to put in their starting five before tip. Yeah. So there's going to be an immediate substitution. Uh, for some reason, there is a change in the Nigerian lineup. So instead, it's going to be Sarah Ogoke coming in. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Tenerife. This is the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup. And it's the opening game here in Group B. And Australia coming out. And coming out firing is Australia's number nine, Beck Allen. Oh, she's got a reputation as being a shooter. She does. And I think that, you know, just the sensation of hitting your first shot in the World Championships is that's going to get your motor running. And answering immediately was Alonu, who there you see on the court, Ogoke, well, it's off now, but uh, that was a good response by Nigeria. Always good to see the first one go in, as you say. Not only for uh, the team, but that, that particular player to see that ball go through the hoop. So early foul here called on Nigeria. And it's on Muhammad, number nine, the player who jumped center. And they get it to Cambridge, and then they knock it away. Then Australia get it right back. Here she is on the low post, facing the double team. And uh, well, that's how you play, really, isn't it, Cambridge? You, you know, try to force to get her out of her hands. Exactly. And okay, you know, they got a foul called there, but that's what you do because you see a little bit of frustration coming from Cambridge and you know she just does a good job of uh, uh, reading that inbounds play noticing she was going to be open but what you have to do is you have to frustrate Cambridge and if you're Nigeria you got a double team and you got to kind of give up that shot and make her make passes that 4-2 lead Quickly to the other end is Allen. So good start for the Opals. And now Ebsery putting the full court pressure on. Trying to force the turnover. She's feisty. Look at Talbot. Boy, if you're Nigeria, you do not want to give up that play. And that is the problem there with Cambridge. How do you... 
keep her from being uh, the dominant force. You can't allow those passes in that easily into that low post, but Nigeria get one in as well, and scoring is Akator. She's got the big reputation. This is Allen. Kayla George trying to post up Akator. Cambridge, oh, that's going to be a charge. And that was actually just great defense. You know, you can kind of tell that she's done her scouting. She knew Cambridge was going to make a little kind of a turn, and she sacrificed her body, but guess what? It, it worked out because she, she drew the offensive foul, and these are the kind of things that are going to frustrate Cambridge. And she has if to you want to get her ball. out of the exactly. And if you want to take Cambage out of the game, you have to frustrate her. That's the only way she's not going to have 20 points and 10 rebounds, to be honest. And the ball up the floor is Kalu. Evelyn Akator. Here's Mohammed. Oh, decides to go right at Cambridge and gets rejected. Not in my house, says Cambridge. And you know what? Not a bad idea. You just drew a foul against her. Maybe try and attack her and see if you can get her to pick up her, her second early in this first quarter. But guess what? Cambridge says I'm a little smarter than that, and I can block the ball. Akator, uh, well defended by Australia. Talbot comes up with a steal. And Kayla George now to Cambridge, and that is money. And you know, that was actually a good job uh, uh, by Australia there. They, were, they stayed calm in the backcourt when they were getting pressed, and then they had a wide open two points. And the shot missed, but re the rebound not clean. Kelly George doesn't bring it down, goes out of bounds. Sandy Brondello barking out instructions here in her first uh, major tournament coaching the Opals. Lono gets in the lane, rattles out, and here comes Allen. And there, Kayla George, and why are you double teaming Cambage on the three point line? It's Cambage can shoot the three, don't get me wrong, but you don't yeah. double team her out there. That is, you know, I guess coach said every time Cambage touches the ball, double team her, but you have to be a little bit more intelligent. And you're not, two people can't run out at Cambage at the three and leave a wide open Kayla George. This level, people are not going to miss layups like that. Is Cambridge able to find the wide open Kayla George? You think she's gotten better since uh, in the past four years, Kayla George, since she played at the World Cup? I, I, you know, I do. She, she's not. She hasn't typically played large minutes for Australia at international events, and you, we see her starting tonight. And honestly, she is a great outside shooter, which really spreads the floor and. It, it's great for a player like Liz Cambage because your, you know, your front court player is able to spread the floor for you and knock down threes, and, and that, you know, opens things up more in the paint for a player like Cambage. So, th they're. Oh, Cambage showing a little bit of range. You know, th they work really well t together for me, Kayla George and uh, Liz Cambage. And Kayla George is a. Uh is a, a big girl. She's a big woman, isn't she? No, but she she's standing really next to Cambridge and she doesn't look quite so big. <laughs> you know, she's taller than every one of the Nigerian players out there, uh, Kayla George's. So she, she's tall and she can knock down the three. She's the kind of post player that's, you know, the pick and pop to a three. Now here's a player, number 10, that's come in for Nigeria that shows a lot of promise. Promise Amakamura. A nice drive, but. Akator doesn't finish, and it looks like she's uh, injured her uh, left quad. Now she looks okay. And Kayla George short. Kalu. They had a really tough semifinal last year at the AfroBasket women, or the women's AfroBasket, against Mali. And then they just crushed Senegal in the final Nigeria. So three-pointer is good from Kalu. 
hit some threes. That'll be uh, much appreciated over there on that DeTikris bench. And Lodu chasing Beck Allen. And Australia facing some D here from DeTikris. And Kalu called for the foul with the shot clock winding down. But she had her feet set. She was about a meter behind the arc. And it looked true. Here we see Sammy Whitcomb checking in for Australia for the first time now. And she's the uh, naturalized Australian who took the place of Lilani Mitchell, who's kind of been the point guard running the show for Australia in the last couple uh, international events for them. And uh, Leilani out with a, a with a foot injury, so. Another easy one for Nigeria, Nakator. So, you know, Sammy Whitcomb, a WNBA player, just coming off winning a WNBA title with the Seattle Storm, gets to make her first appearance with the Australian senior national team at a major event. Like, how cool is that? Well, that was great defense by Kayla George, and you can see Sammy Whitcomb not shy about putting it up right when she comes into the game, but that right there is their bread and butter getting the ball inside to Cambo. Well, she's already racking up a big number today. Eight points. And now an offensive foul called on Nigeria. I think it's Kator calls for the foul. That was Cambridge again. And Lana Smith comes into the game. There's the Australian super fan. We saw him last year in Bingalore. He travels well. He has a nice profession. He, he brought his roux with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, from, from, from Nigeria's standpoint, though, it's encouraging the efforts there. And I like, you know, they're, but some of their, you know, the Australians are getting open, which has to be a little bit worrying. They are, and I think a lot of that has to do with Nigeria are pressing. They're really trying to put a lot of pressure on the ball wherever the ball is. You know, you see one player, another player kind of coming to trap. It's a little, a little bit more freelance type of pressure defensively, and that's why Australia are just staying calm and they're finding the open person. And, and you know, I don't. I think this is what Nigeria has to do defensively, but Australia is just that much better right now, and they're they're staying calm and finding the open person. Alex Bunton has checked in as well for Australia. Making her World Cup debut, number 12. And nice follow, no rebound for Australia. And Australia gonna get a break there because uh, a couple of Nigerians look like uh, Ngifa had, a, had an opportunity to score, she didn't. And Muhammad as well. And Tess Majin's in the game for Australia. So a lot of weapons for Australia coming off the bench. Here's Talbot, and her bounce pass. Uh, Alana Smith picked it up, but then uh, sneaking in there and taking it away was Promise Amakamura, and she's gonna go all the way down and draw the foul from, I think, Alana Smith. No, excuse me, it's all magic. And, you know, like we mentioned, in the pregame uh, uh, talk. I witnessed a little bit of Nigeria practice, and let me tell you, these women were running fast break with a couple passes and scoring within about five seconds, and I think that's exactly what they need to do. You saw a, a great duck in, stole the ball, and just decided to take it coast to coast and drew the foul. And, you know, I know Nigeria maybe doesn't have as big of a bench as the Australians do, but you gotta try and run on this Australian team because for me, Nigeria is the more athletic team right now, and use your advantages. Yeah, Nigeria, I think, have shown some signs here early. It might be a uh, force to be reckoned with here in this tournament. And nice rebound from Muhammad. We promise Amakamura again. Muhammad. Amakamura. Is okay. Now inside to Muhammad. She goes to work against Bunton. Nice footwork from the Nigerian center. He 
was patient. Just very patient, you know, made a couple fakes, did a little up and under, two points. Imagine, drives down low, Whitcomb. Got some nice rotation on that jumper. Alana Smith. And another rebound here for the Tigers. Kalu. Well, I had a chance to watch Nigeria at the FIBA Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament 2016. And, and this version looks a lot better, to be honest. Inside it goes. And again, well, two the free throws have been awarded. Sandy Brandello thought that was a clean block. She's having a good old laugh over there on the Opal's bench. Looks like Bunton did have her arms up. Let's have another look. Well, maybe even before she yeah, got the her. rebound kind of looked like a little bit more contact. First free throw for Sara Emovio is off. Makes the second. One of those uh, former collegians. Now, Tess Magin brings it up. Nearly eight minutes into this uh, opening quarter. Alana Smith, deep, long rebound. Snagged by Beck Allen. reach and the turnover on Alana Smith. I think that's her second. And then Bunton commits the foul on Kalu. Two fouls there. by Bunton there. Would you say that historically uh, the Australian teams that you played against or watched would over the course of the game wear you down? And you want in this game itself here, I mean, is, is this that type of Australian team? I mean, I guess this Nigeria team, this Nigeria team wants to run. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for the Australian teams past this one, but especially some of the past teams because they were incredibly fit. They were probably yeah. one of the most fit countries at any event for the last about 10, 16 years. You know, they were, they were strong and they were never going to get tired out. This Nigerian team is probably more athletic. You know, if you, if you have them just sprint the length of the court, I think the majority of the Nigerians are going to beat the Australians. But as the course of this game goes on, are we going to see the Nigerians' level drop a little bit? Because the Australians, I'm going to imagine, are maybe a little bit more fit for a 40-minute game. We shall see. But, you know, Cambridge now back in because Nigeria had pulled level with those two free throws. And Cambridge immediately goes to work. And she's got 10 points. I know, you know, they just set a little simple cross screen for her to come off. And Nigeria were playing behind. No one came and trapped, which is obviously their defensive scouting plan. And guess what? If you let Cambridge catch the ball anywhere near the rim, she's going to score. And look at that. Another offensive rebound for Nigeria. And, uh, in that category, they seem to be uh, doing okay. Five, six of their 11 rebounds coming on the offensive glass. That's almost <laughs> bizarre for Australia. And once again, Amopio at the free throw line. And uh, we talked about her earlier. Yeah. You know, I, I think she's unknown. She's, she's There's probably not a lot of scouting about her. We would say I'm she's a I'm not even sure they knew she was a lefty yeah. <laughs> coming into this game. Uh, and, and, and again, Kayla George has the ball knocked out of her hands. Uh, they got lucky on that. A lot of good players uh, haven't made this roster. And here is on the break. Whitcomb gets on the board. I mean, so, you know, you talk about Australia, it's a selection headache, isn't it? Who do you take, who do you not take? Here is Nigeria. And again, the offensive rebound. Here, I, gu I guess the retirement of Penny Taylor opens up a spot after the Rio Olympics. 
you know, the injury to Mariano Tolo, who suffered an ACL injury in February yeah. at uh, their training camp, actually, out in Italy. I think they're going to miss her as the tournament goes on. I really, you know, I think she's one of the best bigs in the game, international game right now. And if Liz gets into foul trouble... Wow. That is incredible. The defense, you really have to tip your hat to Nigeria. You don't want to foul the jump shooter. And they did such a great job, and then they fouled the jump shooter much to the annoyance of that Nigerian bench. Look at this. And look at this defense on Kambej. And this is what I mean. They're starting to frustrate her. And you see her talking mm. to the ref. You see her kind of rolling her eyes. And uh, I think, you know, if, if there's any uh, parts of Liz Kambej's game that she needs to work on, it's probably her mental toughness. Yeah. Uh, teams know that, so they're going to they're going to go after her, and they're going to try and make her frustrated and make her make mistakes and maybe get a couple of cheap fouls because of that reason. Mofio sets the pick, but then that was just too obvious. The pick and roll, she threw it right into the hands of Cambridge. Cambridge is just going to go all the way and put it up and in. You know, she passed the point guard there who was just asking for the ball to run a play, and Cambridge says, no, nah, I got it. And now Kambic comes down and swats one out of bounds uh, by Alonu. So with 1.9 seconds remaining. How do you like that stat line? She got a steal, went coast to coast, two and points, runs back, gets a block shot. <laughs> absolutely. In the span of what, 10 seconds? Well, they got just enough time here. They get it in bounds. And. What was it called there, Cambage? I think Cambage's foot was on the line, okay. and you know it's like a plane that that baseline. They're not, you're not allowed to cross over onto it. That was almost unlucky for Nigeria because they had a shot underneath the basket. Now they're going to have to launch one. A Makamura for three. Well, she came close, and really uh, Australia leading by seven points, but it almost flatters them. That that margin here at the end of the first quarter. 24 to 17, Ogles in front of Nigeria. Well, Shona, 24 to 17, and you know, the, the numbers that jump out at you really, uh, poor free throw, poor three-point shooting for both teams, but the numbers that don't, aren't reflected there are the rebounds. And the rebounds are helping keep the Nigerians in the basketball game right now. They've got more offensive rebounds, eight, uh, than defensive, um, defensive class. They've got 13 rebounds in all. And Australia, 10 rebounds. Yeah. And if you're Nigeria, that's what you need to do. You need to try and get easy, quick baskets. You need to give yourself second opportunities. And that's what they've done with all these offensive rebounds. And that's why I actually think, you know, the game is as close as it is after 10 minutes. So it's a really high-scoring game. I mean, are we going to see both teams scoring close to the hundreds? Well, uh, or is defense going to pick up a little bit? Well, certainly, I don't think you can say that Nigeria have uh, solved the Cambridge problem because she has 12 points and a couple of block shots. She's only got one rebound, though. And, um, but and Australia's had a hard time rebounding, so defensively, maybe, you know, Coach Sandy Brondello is saying, guys, we need five people boxing out and rebounding. But, and, you know, from what I can tell, I, I, I can't really take issue with the way that Nigeria has played. It's just a, a couple of their double teams have ended up leaving some opals in the open. Right, second quarter now underway in Nigeria. Don't sound like being a dangerous team here for the opals. Without question. It's a 40-minute game. Might they wear down? Here's Mohammed. Nice pass to Alonu, and now pushing off Imobio. So 
that is one. That is one uh, offensive rebound that is not going to be credited. Good deny defense from Ilonu. And Cambridge, again, she picks, now she rolls. Imagine has it. Five on the shot clock. Australia gonna have to rush. And are they gonna get it off? Imagine does get it off right at the shot clock buzzer. That's a dagger. That was 24 seconds of great defense for Nigeria. And I mean, a good job of being clock aware and, and getting the shot off. Okay. Gets it inside, and the ball batted out to Majin. Here she is in the open floor. Cambridge being pushed by Muhammad. Cambridge goes to work. McAllen comes in for the offensive rebound. Again, Cambridge, and she banks it in. Her numbers keep going up, and Australia now starting to put some distance between themselves and the Tigers. Alone on the baseline, fouled by Allen. And you know, like we said, Nigeria have nothing to lose in this game. So I kind of expect them, they're gonna fight for 40 minutes. I, I, I don't know, if you follow Afro basket at all, those games are a fight for 40 minutes. I mean, they go after each other. So this Nigerian team, maybe it's getting, you know, Australia is starting to build a little bit of a lead here, but I don't think they're gonna go away without a fight. So we're gonna have, you know, a good solid 30 more minutes of Nigeria battling. And I, I, you know, I really think they believe that they can win. Like that's any team that comes into this tournament, you have to have that mindset against any team you're going up against. Well, there they were crashing the offensive boards after the missed free throw. And once again, they're gonna have possession. One thing that Nigeria are doing is they are getting opportunities at the line. They get seven of 10. And Mofio misses again, another offensive rebound, and Agoki puts it up and in. Now, quickly, look at the hustle from Ilonu. It looked like Cambridge was going to have a breakaway. And boy, Nigeria hustled back and have a couple times now just almost fumbled the ball out of bounds. <laughs> Great fight by Nigeria. Kalu. And that air ball saved, but then thrown into the hands of Levy. Allen to Kayla George. Now here's Cambridge again, catching it in the lane. But no Opals under the board. And Kayla George, I believe, called for the foul. And on Akator. So, Kingoke coming back into the game. And Goki goes out. Here we see Steph Talbot coming in to give uh, Beck Allen a little bit of a breather. Who, I think she's played this entire game so far. We haven't seen Izzy McBigoy in ever. She's the, one of the star players out of that Australian youth system. Oh, beautiful bounce pass. Maybe a little too hard for Mopio, in fact. Three-pointer, and that was an opportunity. They had the shot if she caught that cleanly. Here's Cambridge again, and she gets blocked and falls hard on Akatora. George comes out, Alina Smith comes back in. Here it is again. And, you know, Nigeria is not backing down. They, they 
they're fouling hard. And as a coach, you know, you always hear your coaches say, don't ever allow an and one. Don't ever allow an and one. And that's kind of what we're witnessing here when, when they do know that they're going to foul Liz Cambage. They're fouling her and they're making sure that she doesn't get an and one. And look at that stat line, 14 points, two rebounds, and one assist, and we still have 27 minutes to play. So I think this might be a, the Liz Cambage tournament, possibly. Well, we might be seeing one of many enormous performances from her. That's right in that zone, Ilonu Kalu. Nigeria, though, still getting it inside, and throw it away, the pass to Mokyo. Yeah, I think Amokyo was kind of uh, uh, setting up the offensive rebound, thinking that her guard was going to put that shot up. She wasn't quite ready for the pass. Now into Cambridge, and that, if she establishes position there, you've got no chance. No chance. It's absolutely impossible. You cannot let her catch the ball that close to the basket. And meanwhile, she has 16 points. And we still have six minutes. 17 seconds to go here in, in the second quarter. And now she's got another rebound. And Australia running. Edzuri gets in the lane, puts it up and in. Much better from Australia. And Nigeria asking for a timeout now as they trail by 13 points. Kalu drives in, uses the glass. Now Tessa Levy. Ed three and good hands from Akator, knowing the pass was coming. And here she is. Makagor coming in. First big moment for her. She was the MVP of the under 17, wasn't she? Back in when it was held in Zaragoza? Four years ago, yep. And uh, she's still a teenager, so making your, you know, Australia have wow. the tradition of bringing in teenagers playing at the senior level in major events. And guess what? Some of those names who have done that are, are, you know, Australian basketball royalty. So she, she's she's got big shoes to fill as far as being a teenager and playing at this level. Uh, but clearly, he, Coach Brondello has a lot of faith in her and, and thinks this is the moment for her to really test herself. Well, that time, I think the fouls of Smith, because Mike just had her hands up. Meanwhile, Australia's last basket was just off an inbounds pass. There's a layup for Smith. Oh, no, it is on Mike Bigore, excuse me. Yep, and she did leave her feet. Yeah, you know, we see we see Tess Levy here check had checked in for Australia, and she's just one of uh, three players who were at the last World Championship for them. And uh, you know we've talked about the injury bug in Australia and kind of the injury that the injuries they have to deal with. She replaced Mansfield, who's on the roster, and she just arrived a few days ago to this team because you know they, they finally ruled out Mansfield and said she's not going to be ready to go. So. You know, we talk about Sammy Whipcom making oh, her, her debut because of injury. Tess Levy has played for Australia before, is kind of more of a veteran player on this young team for them. And then, you know, we're missing Jenna O'Hay tonight, who is Australia's captain, and she's not able to go. So, you know, sometimes kind of wow. diversity helps you, but. All defense that time for Nigeria. And then a foul. Once again, as promised, Makamura uh, drives hard to the basket. So Tessa Levy picks up the foul. That's a good call. Timeout. So timeout on the floor. And I think 
You know, we expect so much from Australia, so just keep moving and perhaps not as much from they've Nigeria. But hands. again, yes, and roll, uh, but got big hands. That's in, not in my open. eyes, we this Nigerian program has made some uh, advances the last couple of years. And the evidence, this is a much tougher tournament than last year at the AfroBasket. But, you know, they've come out. I like, I like their style. I like what they're doing. Yeah, I do too. And you, you look at this group B, and you know, we saw the the FIBA Nike FIBA World Rankings, and Australia is obviously the leader in this group. Yeah. Uh, they have the highest ranking. Look at the cabbage factor. <laughs> Twelve and fourteen. That's not all. Look at her, the cabbage but. points. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you look at the rankings and... And then, you know, so Nigeria is going to go up against Turkey, who, in my opinion, are going through a lot of transition And right Argentina. Now. And Argentina, who have, don't have a lot of history at these world events. I, I think it's going to be difficult. And Nigeria might be able to make it out. Like, this pool is very, very interesting. Let's just put it that way. They could finish second. They really could. No, they, they could, really they could, could. I, they could lose this game by 30 points. I mean, there's a long way to go. Exactly. You but, know what? Okay, you lose this game, you improve, you work on some things, and then you start to think about the next game, and you see your opponents. And meanwhile, Cambo says, I'm just going to take a rest. <laughs> I've put in. I've, I've put, put in the, my work for that. I've, I've put the ball yes. in the basket quite a few times. We've got a 12-point lead. And I'm just going to sit down for a minute, and then I'll come back out and continue the barrage. And, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you do start to see the starters of Australia as their lead hopefully starts to grow. They start to rest some players because this is this tournament's short. There's a lot of games in not many days. And I, I won't be surprised if we see some teams really playing 12 players because they need to kind of rest those those starters and think about the future a little bit. You're right. And now a three-pointer for Talbot. And it bounces off the shot clock. And, you know, Nigeria were down 13. And here they are, trailing by 10 with possession. So there seems to be a lot of fight in this team. And if they're going to have the Opals, they'll probably settle for them taking those long threes. Muhammad goes to work. Oh, and Magbogor says, don't even think about it. And good D once again by Kalu. She's playing a lot of minutes out there. She is active. I don't know about you, but Magbogor looks to me like the real deal, doesn't she? <laughs> the short amount of time she's been on the court, she has been tough, as is Talbot. That time, Magbogor doesn't get the rebound. She had her hands on it. I mean, you know, if you want to talk about future of there's Australia Kalo basketball. Kalo goes all the way. Another trip to the line. Yeah, yeah, there's, uh, there seems to be a nice pipeline. Talbot's coming out the same for Australia. They have, and you, you know, you and I were out in Minsk doing the U17 where we saw yep. Australia win, uh, Shyla win Heel. bronze with Shyla Heel, uh, NC. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think those are also future senior women staples. Oh, yeah, there's no doubt. Uh, so if you're talking about the future of Australia basketball, and if I'm an Australian Opals fan, I'm not too worried. No. I, I know, I think they had a little bit of bump in 2016 at Rio. Uh, losing last year the Asia Baskets by one point to Japan at the buzzer. Uh, it's frustrating, but I think they're maybe just sort of, you know, turning that page again, and they're going to be at the top of the top of the women's basketball world. Yeah, it's just when you consider the legends, and that is the only word that you can use for their team that won so many medals for so all those players. That it's a tough act to follow. It really is. I, yet, I mean, yet they've got talent, as you can see right here. McGregor. First two points. And she looked, she looked good taking them. Back to the Opals. You know, 19 oh, years Muhammad. old, you already have two points. Have they called? Oh, they called travel. There she is. And she was going nowhere fast on that move. And here's Mike Bagor again. 
making it look easy. Anders, uh-oh, showing her uh, full array of skills there, but turns it over. And another foul called on Talbot. Kalu asking for an you know, unsportsman light. Yeah. Stop the break, but not getting, not getting that call. Here we go. Well, you know, going for the ball. A few years ago, they kind of changed that rule, and they have been calling it a lot, where if it is sort of a fast break opportunity, even if it wasn't an intentional foul, because it was kind of a lot of teams' game plans. They would foul intentionally to just stop the fast break, stop an easy two points, and uh, the refs are really now it's considered an unsportsmanlike foul, and, you know, it's something you really consciously have to think about. Makamore misses. And now the pass over the head of Talbot. Yeah, I hate it. I hate seeing the foul to stop the fast break. I hate it with a passion. I mean, it's... Because it stops the game. It, it does stop the game. I, you know, as a fan, I understand. I understand why, but but yeah. as... Uh, a beautiful pass inside. Go back to that thought. But Nigeria are bound and determined to get good shots. And they're doing... They are sticking uh, with that approach. And this is a perfect example, getting it to uh, Muhammad. If Muhammad can't go to the ball, take the ball to Muhammad. And they did there. The Mobile getting ready to check back in, it appears. I'm impressed by this coach from Nigeria. He's, he's got them playing good basketball and, and you know we talked about that a little bit earlier she he did just take over this team in early August that does not give you a lot of preparation time but we're also talking about a coach who he has been in the women's game internationally he was the coach of Chinese Taipei for for a number of years you know I think he got them a top four finish at the the Asian Cup uh, the Asian Championship, sorry, and uh, so he knows the women's game. Let's put it that way. Yeah, it's his first go around with Nigeria, but I think they're responding. I think they're responding to his energy. If you see, I mean, we see him animated here, and this isn't really a timeout. I'm not sure what's going on, but he is animated, and you know, we heard him yesterday in practice, and he's very encouraging. He he gives them a lot of support, uh, but. He, you kind of see him feeding off his energy, and I think that's why we're not seeing this Nigerian team go away. They're not going to let Australia sort of pull away easily, that's for sure. We haven't really spoken about this, um, but you need to be in that top three to advance. If you win the group, obviously, you go straight to the quarterfinals. But if you finish second or third, then you're going to play what they call a qualification for the quarterfinals or really it's a round of 16. Yeah, yeah, it's sort of a new format that, that FIBA has gone to, and I love it. I really, I love it because one, you have such incentive to win your group. And I'm not saying people didn't want to win their group before, but maybe they would have looked at a game and said, okay, we're gonna rest players. Uh, we'll take the loss if we have to, because we know we can move on. We have kind of seen that, but here you have such an enormous incentive to win your group. So, uh, you know, well, these three group games. I've got another thought on that. Okay, if you're a team like Nigeria, it's not necessarily a bad thing, in my opinion, not to win the group, but to advance, because then you also get another game. And the more games you get, the more comfortable you have your rhythm. You don't, you know, you could argue that maybe you might lose your rhythm if you go straight to the fourth finals. I mean, certainly. From a resting the player standpoint, it makes you're right. It's perfect sense. But I, I'm just looking at this Nigeria team, and I'm thinking the more you games that Emokio has it, yeah. the more she gets into the flow of what this Nigeria team is trying to do. But I suppose if you have your choice, you want to win the group. You definitely want to win the group, and you want you want that extra day off. I mean, they only have two scheduled days days off in this tournament. You win your group, you're going to yeah. have three. Yeah. Uh, it, that makes a difference. It really does. Prince of Makamura makes the first one, and you say that from experience. I mean, you've. You kind of, do you hit a wall in a tournament like this? I, I, you know, I don't want to call it a wall, but you get yes. fatigued if you're playing three games in a row. Yeah. And it's tiring. It's fatiguing. Physically, it's very tiring, but emotionally, like, you're, you're, you have to forget about a game. You have to learn about it. If you lose, you have to reflect, learn from your mistakes and your losses, but then you don't have time to really dwell on them because you have to turn around and start preparing and planning for the next game. So... 
Yeah, that extra day, it does make a difference. You know, these women are going to be ice bathing on those days off. They're going to be getting massages. They're going to have more time to prepare. So winning your group is important. But, you know, we're talking about Nigeria advancing. And right now, the way I'm seeing them playing, I'm saying they could probably get an upset and not become last in the group and have to go home. Because that's what happens, you know. First team moves on automatically to the quarterfinals. Second, third, crossover. And crossover with Group A. And, you know, the second place with third in Group A and vice versa. So... You know, for this Nigeria team, uh, they, they're leaving everything out there. You see the steals by quarter. I know the mini stats that that wonderful graphics department brings up. Thank you very much, gentlemen, ladies. Um, but if you, uh, they have Turkey next, and then they have Argentina. So if you come out today, you play as hard as you're playing, it's close, and say you don't win, you have to recover from that emotionally and you almost wonder if they might show up for that next game a little bit flat. And yes. that would that would be possibly my concern because I'm, I'm seeing this Nigeria team right now given absolutely everything. Yeah. But I think yeah. Coach is doing a good job. He has played 11 people already. You know, he is trying to get people in the rotation a little bit, but... Maybe, maybe the game that everybody has circled on their calendar for the neutrals that determines which of the teams will go forward would be Argentina or Nigeria. Yeah. But that said, you know. But you don't want to wait until the last day to get your win to move on. You yeah. know, you, if I'm Nigeria, I'm saying, okay, let's let's imagine they do lose. I mean, they're, they're only down eight. So I'm not, I'm not ridden them. Yeah. I'm not, I have not ridden them off out of this Absolutely game. Absolutely not. We're and just talking here. You know, you don't wait. I try and get a win against Turkey. Absolutely. Oh, no doubt about it. Sammy Whitcomb for three. That's on line, but it's short. And Nigeria get it back. And that perimeter shot for the Opals right now just isn't on. You know, it's not the first time I've seen that from a team that uh, oh, are good shooters. Deep. Yeah. And that time an opportunity for Nigeria. But look at Prince chasing, then Ilonu. Now they get it into Magbagor and they get it to Cambridge. And it's like you say, just put her on the line. I love her reaction every time she gets fouled. She's incredibly like, shocked that anyone would hit even her. dare to play defense yeah. on her. I mean, you know, it was an obvious foul. The girl knew it was a foul. I, I, not a bad. I mean, she didn't let there, it, there it is. There, these are the reactions. She's Absolutely like, are you love kidding it. me? This is basketball. <laughs> you can't foul me like that. But you know, it what? wasn't a dangerous this, foul. It was a good foul, in my this opinion. Comes, this comes with the territory. You're big. Uh, you know, some people... I mean, she's one of the best women's basketball players in the world right yeah. now. I, mean, I think that's... Anyone who knows the women's game would easily agree with me. If you don't, we can have a conversation. Oh. <laughs> SWAT machine is out, and then Cambridge is hit by... What was it? A reach by... Gifia, here we go, look at this. She swats her, and then watch Gifia reaches in. Oh, she called her with the left Ooh, hand. But again, it wasn't on purpose. I mean, it was a, you know, unfortunately it landed in her face, but it was not on purpose. And again, you can see Cambridge looking with disdain. They she goes me to again. the free throw line. She's <laughs> taking her shots. But, you know, uh, as, a, as a player, you're going up against one of the best in the world. You're going to compete against them. You yeah. want to prove something as well. So uh, this isn't anything new for Cambej. She's used to this kind of competition. She's used to people wanting to kind of show her up, if that makes sense. And the, and the way this game is going, uh, okay, so she is the first one. Uh, she's going to play a lot of minutes today because Australia, while up by 10, they have not been able to put this Nigerian team away. So that means more minutes and more points for Cambridge, who now has 20 first-half points. So she looks to be well on her way to at least 30, if not more. Is Alonu. We might need our statisticians. The effort, the ball batted out. And to Talbot, she gets it to McBegore. 
She's going to be fun to watch. As she continues to uh, progress and her game continues to, to rise and level. Oh, yeah. And now the pass down low. Nice soft touch from Adepo Ryoka. And we, and we see late. Kambesh talking all the way down the floor again, too. And now she's battling her for position. And she has to leave the lane. Now she's going to set the pick. And offensive foul, I think, on Edsery or Kambesh? I think it's on Kambesh on the screen there. Wow, that's a tough foul to give away. Yeah, last no, I possession. Think they... Was it push off on Edsery? I think it was Edsery. Just Offensive foul is Kambesh. Oh, it was Kambesh. Yeah. So 11 points, and Bunton comes back in. And that's, you know, 15 it's seconds, you don't want to pick up a foul. Absolutely not. And you know what? You also don't want Nigeria scoring because that's a little bit of a momentum. They can get the, the score to under 10 points going into halftime. If I'm Nigeria and I'm under 10 well, at halftime. They've got to get it up here quickly. And do they? They get it up just in time, but no foul has been called. And so, all in all, on the one hand, I think you have to say Australia pretty happy to be up by 11, 42 to 31 over Nigeria at halftime. You know, we see 74% from two-point range. A lot of that is Liz Kambaj. But look at those offensive rebounds by Nigeria. Ten offensive rebounds at halftime. Four blocks for Australia. They forced eight turnovers for Australia. I mean, if I'm Nigeria, I have to be pretty happy with the way that we have played so far in this 20 minutes. Well, Shona, yeah, I mean, it seems like we're, we're, we're seeing the praises more of, of Nigeria, even though they're losing. Um, let's evaluate this from an Australian standpoint. You've had kind of a, an uncomfortable, maybe it's an uncomfortable 20 minutes, and you haven't been able to really uh, come out and just blow the doors off of Nigeria here. But at the same time, they're up 11 points. So what does that mean? I mean, they're, you know, Cambridge has 20 points. Is yeah. that a good thing that, that they are relying on her as much as they are? I mean, she's 8 for 11, so yes, that's a good thing because she's not shooting a bad percentage. She's not... You know, she's open, she's scoring when she's open. You know, I would like to see maybe a little Steph Talbot, who, you know, Coach Coach Rondello knows really well, plays with her in Phoenix in the WNBA. I'd like to see her maybe step up a little. She played 15 minutes in the first half. Couple rebounds, she's, you know, four assists, but I'd like to see her get on the board offensive, uh, sorry, on the offensive end, scoring a little bit more, because I do think when it comes down to it, you need to support Liz a little bit more. And, and right now, we haven't really seen that from the uh, Australian team. You know, obviously, we saw the 19-year-old superstar, Ezzy, check in. And I thought she did great for them. You know, two for two from the field, two rebounds, two assists. That's just a great job from her. But it's kind of their outside shooting. I mean, they're 0 for 6. They're not forcing it from three, but they're 0 for 6. And, Traditionally, I would say that Australia already has a couple of shooters. And, you know, we saw Beck Allen hit her first shot, a little pull-up. It was just two points. But, you know, Sammy Whitcomb, she's known as a three-point shooter. She has had a couple open looks. They have looked online to me, to be honest. She did just arrive. Uh, she didn't know she was coming here. She's maybe a little bit tired from the WNBA. And also, I think it might be first game nerves. I mean, their game started at 11.30 in the morning. Not the most ideal time to play a basketball game. But... That being said, I just think it's uh, maybe a little bit more contribution to Liz, but I'm not too worried if I'm Australia. You're happy with the way Liz is going. But if I'm Coach uh, Brondello right now, I'm going to be talking about defense and the, the second chance points that they have given Nigeria in all these offensive rebounds that Nigeria has. Here's Sammy Whipcomb. Um, you talked about her getting, uh, trying to get on track and giving them something from the perimeter and... Again, uh, we'll see what kind of changes they make. And as you say, if they address the issues uh, related to the rebounding, and how much can we expect from Liz Cambage in this second half? 
I'm sure she's in there like, they're all over me. They're just pounding the heck out of me. But she's that's just part and parcel of what she has to deal with on a nightly basis, no matter where she plays. Exactly. You know, if you're big and that's the only way they can stop you, they're going to foul you. You also, you don't want to be the team that says... Liz Cambage scored 50 points against me in the Women's World Cup. So, you know, obviously Nigeria, I think, I think they've done a decent job. She's just that good. And you can't let her catch the ball close to the basket because, in my opinion, it's an automatic two points. Um, but, you know, if I'm Nigeria, maybe, you know, defensively, I'm trying to get her to catch the ball a little bit further out. And like we said, we haven't seen Australia really hit shots from the outside, so maybe really cover the paint and try and make them score from the outside and see if they will do that. Okay, well, we are at halftime, and Australia are leading in, uh, in their day one clash against Nigeria. 42 to 31, but uh, we've seen some very good things from Nigeria, so don't go away. And we've seen uh, also Australia uh, having some struggles, having, but nevertheless uh, kind of playing to their strengths and especially their, their biggest strength, uh, the presence of Liz Cambage. So we will be right back for the start of the second half. So we hope that you'll be with us.
Well, it is the opening day of the FIBA Women's Basketball World Cup 2018 here in Tenerife, the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa. Uh, this is Spain, and we have watched uh, an intriguing first 20 minutes between Nigeria in the green and Australia in the golden green. And uh, it's Australia leading it by 11 points. Uh, Azene Kalu has been very active, hustling up and down the floor, uh, doing a lot of good things for Nigeria. And she seems to be a player that has really, uh, in my mind, gotten a lot better, uh, really, the last couple of years. Last time I saw her was uh, in Nantes, one of your former cities where you used to live. Yeah. Did you see her by any chance walking around town? <laughs> I did not, but I actually did go to the majority of those games. So the Women's Olympic Qualifying Tournament in 2016. You know, we talked a little bit earlier how I think uh, the outside shooting of Australia hasn't been great. And let's credit that to the Nigerian defense. I mean, they have been all over those guards. Nothing is easy. Australia trying to bring the ball up the court when Nigeria is a little settled and into their defense have made it very difficult. So, uh, you know, give Nigeria credit for 0 for 6 from the three-point range. You know, I know they're shooting 74% from two, but keep in mind, eight of 11 of those, eight out of 11 are from Liz Cambage. And, you know, they've been open because of the Nigerian defense. So uh, Nigerians pressure defense. I think they've given Australia some easy baskets, but, you know, I I'm, I'm impressed. I mean, I think maybe we'll see a more energetic, uh, I think, you know, Coach Brondello has definitely talked at halftime about the offensive rebounding by Nigeria because it, moving on, you can't let a team get a 10 offensive rebounds at halftime against you. I mean, 20 a game, that's an enormous amount of extra shots. That's what it is. It's called extra possessions, and you're giving them a second chance to shoot. So, you know, Nigeria is only shooting 24% for the game, but they have a lot of shot attempts. They have 29 attempts at two. They've already been in the free throw line 20 times. They're just shooting that much more than this Australian team because of those second chance options. Well, one of the bright spots you can see behind Brandello is Mac Bagor, who has come in, I thought, looks looked the part. Yeah. For a 19 year old. <laughs> yeah, and she's uh, perhaps crying out for more minutes uh, down, the, down you know, in the future. Yeah, and you know, like I said, I think it, it's an enormous loss for Mariana Tolo. I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of hers. I think she's one of the best centers in the game. But it also gives opportunities for young players to get experience. And moving on, even if it's just, you know, 14, 15 minutes a game this tournament, it's experience. And she will be able to use that in the future, moving on with her, what I imagine is going to be a great long career. Kayla, you're the one. Okay, now if it's a zone, then you pass it to the corner, dribble up. Short corner, go. Well, as is so often uh, said in basketball, see Jenna O'Hay not able to go today, so her absence uh, perhaps a uh, real blow for, for the calf injury or calf Absol strain. Absolutely. I mean, uh, she's the captain of this team, so it kind of shows her importance. I mean, she hasn't been at the World Cup since 2010. She did play in 2012 has a bronze medal there, has a bronze medal from 2010 for this Australian team. But she is the most experienced. I would say you know, she's not an enormous scorer for them. She can score, but her IQ and her leadership is maybe what this Australian team is kind of missing that little extra spark out on the court right now. So second half action underway here, and Cambridge uh, takes the first shot. And Kalu. I, I suppose, again, Nigeria will be happy if Cambridge is not taking shots uh, in the lane. And now the turnover. And Epsiri back out on the perimeter over to Talbot. Uh, you know, right before uh, uh, we went off at half, I said I'd like to see Talbot get on the scoreboard and look a little bit more comfortable shooting. And I, <laughs> that's a good start to the second half for her. Well, Alonu launches one and uh, misses, but Muhammad gets another offensive rebound. 
And you know, I just talked about offensive rebounding and 45 seconds into this third quarter, Nigeria already had their first offensive rebound of the quarter. Kalu buries it from deep. And that's what happens. You give up an offensive rebound and then you just gave up three points. <laughs> How about Kayla George? Well, again, and the long rebound. <laughs> Cambridge saved it into Muhammad. She almost lost it out of bounds, but gets it in. And now Ilonu beats Australia's defense down the floor. I mean, well, beats Cambridge down. And uh, she didn't have to shoot over her tall, outstretched arms. And there's Cambridge, though. And again, she catches it that close to the basket. It's in the discussion. Yeah. Yes. It's gonna go in. And you know, her first shot of the, this third quarter, I think they did a better job. She caught the ball faced up, but she was outside the paint, and she can sh shoot that shot, don't get me wrong, but she missed, and that's what you, you have to force her out. I mean, she was under the basket. She's not gonna miss that. Kalu this time gets blocked by Ebsery. Beck Allen. Inside it goes to Cambridge. Oh, boy. Actually, you know, you see Cambridge kind of flailing a little bit, looking at the ref like, hey, it's a foul. I don't really think that's a foul. I think it's pretty good, tough defense. She, you know, she, she stayed straight up. She bodied her. It's not a foul, in my opinion. Another steal for Ebsery, but then Ilonu comes right back and takes it away from Ebsery. Muhammad going to work. Oh, she's bound to determine to get it up, and she was uh, perhaps fortunate to get it over Cambridge with this, and now foul called on Nigeria coming back on defense. You know, I'm not really sure that's a great foul there by Nigeria. We see. Look at this though, with Cambridge again. That was the play that you were talking about, uh, where she was wanting to foul, but now she's being pushed out, and the foul has been called again. And, you know that open court foul on Cambridge earlier by uh, Akator. It's her third, and she's one of the best players for this Nigerian team. You don't want to see her get her third foul three minutes into the third no, you're quarter. Right. That was a so, and, and, and it, you know, it wasn't shooting. She didn't, they weren't, didn't really have an advantage, so it was not a good foul. And Akator that time just swatted it <laughs> She's not worried about maybe getting her fourth. <laughs> she swatted that in anger. Look at this. Well, there was uh, contact. Is that initiated? I guess you'd say it's she, initiated she more by Ebsery. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She, you know, I thought that was good job defensively. She went straight up, read the ball well. Well, again, they get it to Cambridge, and this time, well, she did not take advantage. She was not as automatic as we thought. Another jump shot from Kalu. And now she's playing some. Full court D, Ebsery quickly to Beck Allen, open for three. And this time, Cambridge did not even have position, was able to get it, but lost control. And Nigeria, again, if they attack quickly, they can do so without Cambridge. Here's Akator. And perhaps fortunate there to maintain possession. What a, what a great start to the Women's World Cup. Here, Akator. Oh, she brought a little bit of rain and got it to fall in. Teardrop, eh? Nothing but net with that kind of arc. Well, she's starting to have uh, an impact. And, you know, this Both is a woman ends. who averaged 15 points last year at Afro Basket, so she's capable of scoring. She only had four points in the second half. I'm sure Coach talked to her and said, Hey, you this. know what? We need you to score. This is Akator with, again. The camera almost missed the ball. It went so high. <laughs> I, I honestly thought that might be an air ball when she released it. because, And it just, you know, she's got that sweet release. This time Cambridge was fouled. Here's uh, Allen. 
And this time, and this is a game changer if the three pointers start falling for Australia. It's an 11 point lead. And that, from a three point standpoint, is their first of the game. They're one of nine. And now the ball in the hands of the Oakles. F3 again, open floor. Kalu guarding, takes it away again. Wow, and she's she gonna get a layup. For Kalu's uh, energy, look at her. And Brondello looks on with concern. Kalu is one fired up player. I mean, and Ebsery, she's a good player. She's a leader, one of the leaders of this team. You know, she, she knows. She's experienced, she's an experienced point guard, but Kalu is just all over the ball. Yeah. She has very Look quick hands. Look at this. She was complaining that she didn't get the steal earlier and then realizes, oh wait, I'm right here. Yeah, that was a good decision by Talbot to, pull, to hold back, not commit the foul and complicate things. So Australia is still on top by nine. Ebsery goes out. Tess Madgen is uh, back in the game. And they get it to Cabbage. And she catches it right in, again, that area where she's going to score. We're back to an 11 point lead midway through the third quarter. Oh, uh, Kalu. Oh, she gets rejected. Now, Cabbage is talking. I hope the mic on. Yeah. Are, are Apologies, picking up folks. everything she says. Uh, she's an animated one. I mean, I like it though. She brings energy. And now the SWAT. But the foul called on Beck Allen. And again, you want to get the hand in the face, but you don't want to foul the jump shooter. Oh, the super fan. Can't believe it. Well, maybe she, she got her a little bit of the body. Yeah, kind of after. And that's what the ref calls. As a, you know, for a jump shooter, you have to let them land. And, you know, maybe they thought she made contact when she came down after her shot. Well, you know, all Nigeria are getting to the line frequently in this game, and doing a pretty decent job. Yeah, you, they were 14 to 20 in the first half, 70%. It's not horrible, but imagine they made a couple more. They would have been in single digits going into halftime. So, but I mean, 20 free throw attempts in a half is, is a lot. It's a good amount, and yeah, it gives you extra tr chances to score. Well, Three-pointer from Talbot, no good. Great hustle from Beck Allen, but not able to uh, save it. Beck Allen getting a little bit of a break after that great hustle. Almost gave her team a second chance there on the shot. So a 10 point lead for the Opals. And again, perhaps uh, an attempt to get Cambage to pick up some fouls and then following it up, her shot. And Defero Iroka puts it up and in. And Cambage. A little frustrated. Again. Now look and at again. Kalu again, and Tess Madgen this time. Somebody's got to be open. Three-point attempt is good. Whitcomb. Well, that was only a matter of time, wasn't it? It was, and you know, I talked about Whitcomb. She's a three-point shooter. I mean, I, th I think in the WNBA, she had six threes in a game. So to be able to do it at that level, that defense, she can clearly do it at this level too. And it's a great pickup for for this Australian team who don't have a ton of outside shooters. I mean, I think Beck Allen can shoot from the outside. I think Steph uh, Talbot can. Kayla George is definitely a shooter. She hasn't been shooting the ball great, really, in these preparation games. But, you know, Whipcomb, Whipcomb is someone who can really extend the floor for them. Yeah. Well, back 
to nine point game. And Little George, Whitcomb, Max Begore. Good D from Nigeria playing denied. They don't get it though. Whitcomb gets it, puts it up, and another three. And you can understand why she puts it up right when she comes off the bench. She is just a natural scorer, isn't she? She is, and she is a great look. Are quick. She did not have a lot of time to catch and shoot that, and it looked great. Akatur tries in, and this time she gets the end one. Oh, this is a good game. And I think that was Mac Begore, so. You know, we talked about this Nigerian team. I don't think they're going to go away ever. It's just the way that they play. You know, anyone who follows women's basketball who watches court. Afro basket. Yep. Almost. I mean, you just have to really tip your hat to Kelly. She has been outstanding uh, with that defensive effort. Full court press. And let's see how. It's her hands. She just has these. I mean, don't get me wrong. Her feet are incredibly oh. fast. And that was a foul. Whipcomb pushing off. You know, maybe maybe Callow exaggerated a little bit, but you did see the push yeah, off by Whitcomb. I mean, we'll probably see it here in replay, but watch this. Yeah, kind of. Maybe maybe a little bit of acting, mm. but no question. You know, <laughs> give her an Emmy, give her an Oscar. Akatur again drives in and bull bull rushes her way. Right at Kayla George. And you know, we see Akator already with 14 points. I talked, she had four points at halftime. She averaged 15 points a game at Afro Basket last year. And I think that was a big emphasis by uh, uh, Coach Otis for Nigeria. He said, hey, we need you to get involved. We need you to attack. And that's exactly what we see her doing here in this uh, second half of this basketball game. Well, it looks like this might be the World Cup of close games because China have escaped with a 64-61 win over Latvia in the other arena, the Kiko. And uh, so they start with a win, a narrow escape. Latvia were leading in that game late as well. It's going back and forth. And now all of our attention is on Brondello in Australia and this, uh, you know, their approach against this Nigerian team that just simply is not going away. Yeah, and you know, traditionally, I, I if, you, if, you, if you have ever watched Australia basketball, traditionally they're incredibly strong defensively. And I don't think they're really putting up this great defensive effort right now. I mean, Nigeria already have 21 points in this third quarter, still two minutes 41 left in the quarter. And if I'm Coach Brondello, I'm looking at this and saying, guys, we need we need to play stronger. This is not the. Oh, oh she got I did a shot not see the her there. Yeah, I did not see that. Um, yeah, you know, I think they need to pick up their energy, and I think they need to pick up their energy on defense. If I'm Australia. You know, in the past, with past Nigerian teams, probably and past Australia teams. Uh, that, that fatigue factor that we talked about, that wearing a team out would already be revealing itself. And it just hasn't. I mean, if anything, Nigeria, <laughs> look, this out. is their type of game. Yeah, exactly. They are playing a great opener. But, but they we'll, are incredibly athletic. I mean, we've seen that. They are fast. They have quick hands. They have quick feet. Wickham's cross court now inside and good rotation from Prince, Prince's uh, Amakamura. Promise a Makamura, excuse me. Lana Smith, and again, that's a, uh, a shot that I'm sure Nigeria will not mind Australia taking. And then Ilonu goes in and gets rejected by Bunton. Makamura. And a soft touch. No good. And the opens. Oh, 
That's Magin in the game, gets it to Smith. Now Smith, or Buncombe rather. And here's Whitcomb, drives in with a little runner. And i tell you, that was a good box out, but still, they were struggling that time. Was uh, Edefe Rioka keeping Australia off the glass? Remember, these are the moments when you think Nigeria might have an opportunity when Cambridge is out of the game. They're down seven. They can attack down low now. Oh, Akatur this time a little bit too hard. And that'll be Nigeria ball. And another offensive rebound for Nigeria. You know, we talked about they had 10 offensive rebounds at halftime, and they have 15 now. I mean, they haven't fixed that uh, issue. Entry pass, but offensive foul. Called on Kyler. Australia are not allowed to be comfortable in running their offense, are they? Now, no, Brunton sets a pick and rolls, but... Now, Alana Smith, oh, and the ball right into the hands of Ilonu. And it goes out of bounds with 3.2 seconds on the shot clock. Oh, and they pass the towel, but that is a breakdown of, of mammoth proportions. Yeah, Can't I, give that up, especially with 3.2 seconds. I mean, good, good read by Talbot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but, you, you know, you got to kind of force that, that top offensive player towards the ball and towards where everyone is and where your help side is. Bologna over to Akator. And Button, again, another rebound. Makamura can miss the foul out on the perimeter. So Australia will go to the line since Nigeria are over the limit. And you know, I, I love Nigeria's energy, tenacity on defense, but that's not a smart foul in my opinion. And it was a foul, you know, you, you can't body the, the dribbler at half court like that. And you don't, you know, I mean, you're only down nine and you're putting them on the free throw line with 41 seconds left in the quarter. Not the smartest of fouls. Mosbio checks in, and Magin uh, makes the first. And takes it back to an 11-point advantage now for the Opals. Same uh, margin of their lead at halftime. Here's Yolone who drives in. And I think the foul on Smith. Here it is again. I mean, her feet weren't set. You know, you, you saw her. She didn't have two feet on the ground. Good job trying to get there on help side, but I think it was a foul. Her feet were not set. But Alonu hasn't really shot the ball that well today. Two of nine from the floor. Uh, but she has a couple free throws there that Get it back to single digits. Not the more imagine. Not the more moving her feet well, but imagine still able to get a shot off. And now an offensive rebound and. Boy, Button went down hard. They were looking for a foul, Australia. Wasn't called. And Nigeria, well, they're down nine. A long way to go in this one, folks. Australia, 63, Nigeria, 54.
But you can see the numbers, three three-pointers for Australia in that uh, third quarter. So that, that helped them. And again, Nigeria continuing to get opportunities at the free throw line. Yeah, and you know, it's second chance points as well. 15 offensive rebounds, I think they have 27 free throw attempts. Uh, this is kind of what's keeping them in the game, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I think they're doing a good job of sort of sticking to their game plan and staying within it and staying within their their comfort zone. Um, and, you know, you can kind of tell that this Australia team is not used to this sort of a style of basketball. And we see styles, uh, you know, on all the continents. They, they, you know, they differ a little bit, and I think this style is frustrating this Australian team. Yeah, it's uh, a very physical, physical approach from Nigeria as well. I mean, we've seen uh, inadvertent, of course, uh, shots to the face uh, that are hitting the Australians. They were hoping to get a foul at the end of the third quarter when Bunton went, went in and went down hard. She went down hard, yeah. So a long way to go in this one. Cambage, meanwhile, has 26 points. So she had 20 points at halftime. That was her lowest scoring quarter, I believe. So, so a lot better job by, by Nigeria on Cambage. And now she's going to come uh, back into the game. Cambage, you see. Allen, Edzeri, Kayla George, and Whitcomb. Now Kalu back in along with Ilonu, Akator, Pinocchio, and the ball turned over and Ilonu. Nigeria complaining that thought that Australia got a hand on that. It looks like Alana Smith uh, talking about the shots to the face that the Opals have taken. Looks like she got, she got one right on the nose. Yeah, I hope it's just a little bit of a nosebleed and not a broken nose because oh. those can be annoying and have very painful. I have, yeah. They're not fun. Not fun at all. And you know, if it is a broken nose, they're just gonna have to wear a mask the rest of this tournament. It's annoying having but it something looks on your face. Cool. I think it looks pretty nice. It's cool with the black eyes yeah. and the broken nose. Like a superhero <laughs> or heroine. Okay, so it moves you three fouls. She has the responsibility. Oh, and this time they are going to get the M1. So this is a tough sequence for Nigeria. At one end, thinking it should have been their ball, and now Cambridge. Look at this. She so does a strong, great eh? job of getting that ball off. Yes. A 12 point lead now for Cambridge and Australia. And sure enough, Alana Smith looks like she's in a little bit of discomfort over there. Stanford star. Akator. Little up and under. Cambridge is uh, saying they should have called traveling. Here she is, catching it down low. And. There was no, there's not a play that Cambage doesn't look at the ref <laughs> and say, what That's, are you doing? Something to talk about? Yeah. She now has uh, got 31 points. She could be back on for the 40. Kalu. Oh, good play by Whitkin to knock it, but couldn't come down with the ball. <laughs> little momentum shift here for Australia. Well, I mean, Cambridge has five points in the first minute 15 of this quarter. So. Yeah. And you really, you know, when she's on, it's, it's you know, you know they're going to score. Kind of seems a little calmer. There's Zaloni facing uh, defense. Makamura. And they, Nigerians. Almost wrestled that ball away, but the jump ball was called. And uh, I tell you, they get after you. So the possession error in favor of the Opals. Uh, 
Uh-oh. A bit of dribbling from Cambo. Now she's battling. Battling for position. Good job from Muhammad. And then Becky Allen, nowhere to go. Not sure what that was. Yeah, not really. That was the offense that Australia was kind of looking for. Kalu thought about launching one, but decided against it. Now Wickham out on her. And into Akator. And that time, Kayla George stood tall. Did a great job defensively. Ebsery, right on the edge of the free throw line. Ilona with the rebound. 12 point lead for the Opals. There's Muhammad. Uh oh, we've seen this before. She takes on Cambage. And the foul called on Cambage. She kind of looked over at the ref like, are you sure we have fouls? <laughs> well, she has got three fouls. Oh, yeah. It's not uh, calls for concern. And really, yeah, you know, Nigeria now 20 of 28. Now you just hear her say the ball doesn't lie. <laughs> so clearly she did not think she fouled. So she gets fouled all the time, but she never fouls. Ah, the ball was there right for Ilonu to take. I don't think she realized it was there. Here's Kambich again. And that was, again, the quick hands from Amakamura to kind of, uh, she got a touch on that ball and, and it forced Kambich to kind of lose it before yeah. she even went out for a shot. And Akhtor again. This time she does get a foul call with Kayla George. McAllen goes out and Talbot comes back in. So you see him with his mouthpieces and uh, see Lana Smith over there with uh, the gauze on her nose. And you realize why they wear these mouthpieces. Did you wear a mouthpiece? Um, Sometimes? I do, yeah, so I have one. Only when you go to bed at night? Yeah, exactly. Oh. Uh, actually, speaking of mouthpieces, uh, Brittany Reiner in an exhibition game against Canada right before they came here last weekend. <laughs> Chipped her too. So she did not wear her mouthpiece. I'm sure she might have a mouthpiece now. So people are going to enjoy uh, watching Brittany Griner from the USA uh, with a little bit of a cheap tooth. And, you know, that's why dentists and team doctors Advise encourage you. you to wear them. <laughs> yeah. Look at the hustle, the defense, the turnover. And Nigeria, how did they not come away? No, they get it back and they put it up again. They don't come away with it. Elonu, and then she turns it over. The Tigers. There was a basket to be had for them, and they just couldn't put it in. Good effort from the Opals, and uh, that would have been a dagger if that would have gone. Now Muhammad, and Muhammad puts the ball down, and very alertly, uh, Whitcomb reaches in and knocks it away. Beck Allen getting the rub down. Physicality is taking its toll. She might have a little bit of blood on her jersey. Well, they're going to be uh, worn out after this game, the Opals. You know, uh, those of you who follow women's basketball, I'm sure you've been on the, the FIBA website checking out this tournament, and, uh, you know, they had a great little what to expect, what to know video posted. And you had coach uh, Sandy Bardello say, our most important game is our first game, and it's Nigeria. And then the next day, our most important game. And, and that's the way. Yeah, it, and that's the way you have to think. So I don't by any means think the coaching staff of Australia or the players took this game lightly. No, not at all. I just think Nigeria has come out, and they've had a great game plan, and they've played with a lot of energy, and they've made things very frustrating for this Australian team. Here's oh, Cambridge. Good patience, gets it back. Oh, still can't get it to go. And Prince of Makamura goes down, and Wickham again makes another play on defense. 
Now the pass to Kayla George and gets it to go. not open for her and now foul so again Australia maintaining possession timeout on the court you feel like as you look at this pass inside to Kayla George you know Nigeria given everything but they just don't have quite enough to get over the hump against this uh Australia team that is once again being led by 31 points, Liz Cambridge. Yeah, you know, I, I think uh, they just they have to give so much energy. And I, I feel like this last quarter we're starting to see them uh, tire out a little bit. To the assist by quarter. Are you sure? Uh, hey, see, uh, Adora, check back in. Adora? Yeah. Uh, uh, promise? Uh, see the boys in the oh, paint. Antonio! Adora! There's a uh, cabbage going to work. Saw Dora, she was out of the game, and they said, You're going back in, and here's what you want you to do. And she was walking behind him. She had no idea. She was like trying to lean over to see that see him draw the play. Oh, what a great start. See Liz Cambage, 31 points. Her rebounding has been uh, a little bit better in the second half. She could get a double-double in every single game. She is that talented. Absolutely, she can get a double double this entire tournament. Liz, double double, Cambage. That's what we're going to call her. And here she is, catching it down low, and she is going to the line for one. And you know, I, I really like the way that Kayla Francis, sorry, Kayla George and Liz Cambage play together. I mean, Kayla does a great job of looking for her. Like I said, Kayla's a good shooter. You know, she hasn't really been shooting the ball great in preparation games, but you have to respect her shot, which opens up the floor, and she's a great passer. We've already seen her made a couple of really nice assists to Cam Badge down low. So, you know, as far as having a high-low threat, Australia has it in Kayla Francis and uh, Liz Cam Badge. Kayla George, wow, excuse me, that was her... Uh, before she got before married. Before she got married. <laughs> her maiden name. There you go. It is her maiden name. So, if you... You now have a chance with Cambridge to, to sit down and rest a little bit with McBegger coming back in. Shot clock's about to expire, and the rejection from Sammy Whitcomb, excuse me, from Tess Magin. No look pass to McBegger. And finally, the Opals are starting to pull away. I feel like, the, you know, they're breathing a little easier now. They've played better defensively. Uh, they've made some defensive plays down here. Tess Magin with that last block. And look, they're, they're uh, Nigeria get the basket that time from Edefa Rioka. But they're having to go all the way to the end of the shot clock. And right now the clock is becoming the enemy. And now the, the pass and... Nigeria wanting to travel, two on two break here. What will Kalu do? Oh. And Sammy Whipkin chases it down. And now they find McBegger again. She dumps it, good on selfish play, but then Kayla George. <laughs> I've confused you now, haven't I? <laughs> I was like, is Kayla Francis George? Kayla George? Yeah, I remember when she was Kayla Francis. Now the steal, look at it. Here comes Talbot. And lays it up, and that's a killer. 
That's it a is. dagger layup. And, you know, I think we see this Nigerian team running out of energy. You know, we talked about that. I said athletically, as far as kind of fast twitch muscles go, I think Nigeria beats Australia. But in the long run, you know, I said it's a 40-minute game. I could see the athleticism and the stamina and the strength of Australia starting to come out later in the game. And I think that's what we're seeing here in this fourth quarter. The rebound, and the offensive glass, and the pass. And again, the denial. And I tell you, they just do not give up. So substitutions with 254 remaining. And that gallon dribbling the ball, and, and it looks like Australia's got this one in the bag. 2.45 to go. On the one hand, it's unfortunate for Nigeria because they've, they've been within striking distance, but yeah. now the game has gotten away. I mean, you know, if you're just tuning in now, this is not how the game felt at all for the last 37 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> No, it was right around that 10, 12 point deficit. Almost uh, a miracle uh, layup there from Akatora. Now Prince Amakamura gets it. Put, and Nigeria, well, they just don't give up, do they? Muhammad will go to the line. This will be a result. This will be a game, not a result. This will be a game they can build on. Um, Nigeria. Absolutely. And this will be a good win for Australia. Because this was not an easy game. I mean, no. it's, you know, in I Turkey. It was a good learning experience for them as well. And Very Turkey, good. Turkey and Argentina will be watching this game and thinking, oh boy, that's going to be a tough game. Absolutely. Because maybe, maybe in the past it might have looked at a, a team coming out of the Afrobasket women thinking, I mean, that's not the case. Keep in mind, Nigeria's never had a win at this tournament. They haven't participated in many, but they have never got a win at this tournament. So. You know, if you're just kind of breezing over and I'm, looking I'm, at I'm fairly the certain, country. I'm fairly certain that streak is going to come to an end. From what I know, from what I've seen, this is, this is a team. They, they are going to give Turkey a hard time, and they're going to give Argentina a hard time. Now, I would not be surprised if they won both of those games, but yep. we shall see. They have to, uh, you know, maybe more than anything, it's the mental aspects of getting over this one and and also that depends on what happens tomorrow with turkey what are they going to do in their game today against argentina yeah exactly i mean this this group is very interesting and like we said you know winner moves on to the quarterfinals automatically second and third place play in the qualifications for the quarterfinals fourth place team goes home i can't predict this group right now that was a good move there from Mohammed. Good footwork. And, and you know, this last minute 43, you're not going to see this Australian team let up because points could become interesting as well. You know, if, if points become the tiebreaker. Hey, it's good news, by the way, that Alana Smith is back out of the court. She took that shot. She took a shot to the nose, but now she's just taking that shot and missed. And now another basket by Akator. And again, you just have to salute the Nigerians. They simply, they're going to play 40 minutes. Absolutely. They're going to fight for 40 minutes. I mean, it's their mentality. It's kind of their identity. Uh, I think a lot of the African teams, Senegal, you're going to see the same thing. It is just their identity. That's how they play. You like your fan, don't you? The Australian super fan. I mean, he's, you know. He's, with his root. He can't complain <laughs> with his uh, number of times he's been on TV today. Of course, if you dress up like that. And you bring an inflatable kangaroo. I guess there's high probability. Are they going to get it across midcourt? They barely get it across midcourt in time. Just imagine fouled by Kalu. With 12 to go, I mean, it's not impossible. I, I think you could probably say stranger things have happened. They're coming back from 14 points down with 112. It's unlikely. Uh, yeah, I mean, this Nigerian team's a good 
rebounding, offensive rebounding team. Uh, they haven't shot the three well. Only Kalu has made the two three-pointers. She's two for six. They're only two of 13. It is a little difficult if you don't shoot the three ball well to come down from this kind of a deficit. But like I said, we've seen them offensive rebound great. So they'll give themselves second chances, that's for sure. Ilonu for three. And then Prince Amakamura, I don't think was uh, in good rebounding position there. The ball bounced her way and she didn't take it. So the foul and Australia again with another opportunity here at the free throw line and Tess Magin. Here's the, I mean, you have to say the story of the game. If, if Cambridge continued to play and she could, and Brondello very wisely, I think is sitting her down uh, and just giving some other minutes to other players. Yeah, she could have easily had a 40-point game today. Yeah. Easily. I, you know, she's only played 27 minutes only. Still quite a few minutes, but 34 points, 27 minutes. 14 to 22. You know, she was 8 for 11 at half, so Nigeria did do a better job of uh, forcing some misses by her in the second half. What a shot from Muhammad! Goodness me. Inside the final 40 seconds. And much to build on for Nigeria in this one. They're not going to win it. But Tess Magin. And you wonder what's going through the mind of Sandy Brandello. I guess she'll go back and look at the game tape, perhaps. Okay. Where and they, uh, Sandy, I mean, uh, Magin, excuse me, is, uh, I, like, I like the activity from Magin and Whitcomb defensively. They seem to have picked it up a bit in the second half. And then offensively, they're trying to uh, get that ball back. Here we go, final 18 seconds. And Tess Levy have it, has it. And Australia, I'm guessing, will try to get one more basket. Beck Allen into McBegger. And she puts it up and in. Why not? So your, your first international event, Big Beggar, eight points. How cool is that, 19-year-old? Well, there's no such thing as moral victories at all. Nigeria would be disappointed because they came out and gave it all today. They played uh, one of the traditional powerhouses in basketball, both men and women. And Nigeria want to get they won't want that extra last shot. play. Yeah, yeah absolutely. you can't blame them. Uh, one, I think it's a good learning experience to see if they can execute what the coach says after the timeout. And, uh, you know, it's something to work on. Can they score? And maybe, like we said, point difference is going to come down to being important in this group. I wouldn't be surprised. So, uh, you know, it's important to, to maybe try and narrow the gap. Obviously, Australia is going to win this game, but this is, uh, I want to see how they can execute here. Promise, no. This is so Australia, we haven't really this spoken is, uh, about this. Their this fast break goal. actually coming into play. Uh, it's been a factor. Uh, we saw Liz Campbell kind of need a couple of those, you know. Yeah. She had that steal to a fast break layup in the first half. We saw her rebound, outlet, pass to Kayla in the second half. And that was another factor as well. The bench scoring, 29 points for Australia, 15 for Nigeria. So, you know, depth has probably come into play. And don't forget, Australia have had to play today without Jenna Huhay with the calf injury. And now Cambridge is over there dancing. Now she's smiling. Now she's not complaining about it. You know, here in Tenerife, you can go up to the Tebe. It's like the highest point in Spain. And they have a moonwalk. Maybe she'll go do that. Anyway, here, Nigeria. Kalu's got to launch it. Uh, she waited too long. They've got to know they've only got so much time left. It seemed like it was a long two and a half seconds, seconds, seconds or whatever it was. was. 86 see. to 68, Australia win it over Nigeria. Love seeing the great sportsmanship, 
sports womenship, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, <laughs> Australia don't look like they want to go and have lunch with the Nigerians after <laughs> after that after that game. The physicality was there. But Nigeria came out here that you know what we are going to make their lives miserable. We're going to play physical basketball. We're going to get after them. And you, you know honestly, that's just that's the reality. This is the jungle, and you got to get out there and play hard. If you don't win in the physical stakes, you're not going to win, really, are you? I mean, you got to you got to have that approach. Absolutely, and you know, like you mentioned, it was their game plan. Well, okay, talk us through the numbers if you can. A lot of free throws for Nigeria. A lot of free throws for Nigeria. You know, we see the 19 offensive rebounds. That's enormous, absolutely enormous, and that's something that Australia is going to have to think about moving forward from here. Uh, free throw attempts, you know, 34 for Nigeria. They did a good job of being athletic. I, I'm sure that's something Australia has to address also. Here we have the game leaders. No surprise there. Kambash with 34 points, 12 boards. She was a stud. I mean, this could be her tournament. If, Four blocks. If Australia gets on the podium, uh, a big reason of that is going to be her performance. And if they do not, you have to stop her. If you know you're playing them, she is going to be your focal point. And we saw her get frustrated, and I think that's what you need to do. If you know, you're know you Argentina, you're Turkey, you're kind of watching this game and saying, okay, she can be a little hot-headed. Maybe if we can frustrate her, push her out of the key a little bit more, uh, we can take her out of the game. I'll tell you another number that was impressive for me was the 25 assists for Australia. Yeah. And it's interesting that um, number one in that category was Kayla George. I, but I really, you know, I think as far as assists go, and I talked about this, I think Kayla George is compliments Liz Cambage. One, she can spread the floor because she's a shooter. And two, she's a good passer. So she's giving that high-low look. She's looking for Liz under the basket. And that's why, you know, we see her racking up the assists today. So Australia uh, get off on a winning start. They will take on Argentina tomorrow. And Nigeria will face Turkey. And from Nigeria's standpoint, you have to put this behind you. You have to take the positives out of it, and I think there are many, and, um, and come back strong tomorrow and be ready to play mm -hmm. and believe that, you know, that you can, you can really cause problems for Turkey that the way that you did against Australia today for at least, I'd say, three, three and a half quarters. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you have to, you have to le learn from this, but you have to move on quickly because you have to start preparing for your next game. Same goes with Australia. I think there's a lot of learning points from this this game that Australia had. And, you know, coach isn't going to have a lot of time to reflect because you got to start thinking about tomorrow. And that's what it's like at these major tournaments. You know, you each day is a new day of business and then you got to move on. So they will come back out and play both of these teams tomorrow. And, and that is the nature of tournament play. And it's the Opals and their fans that end up uh, smiling at the end. But you see the Nigerians uh, also thanking their fans that came to watch them. So that's it, folks. Thanks for watching Australia 86 to 68 over Nigeria. All right, we'll come back and say the standings as we speak. Australia 1-0 up at the top, Nigeria 0-1. And, and of course, Argentina and Turkey coming up. And you want to finish in that top three to advance. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to officially welcome the teams on board. Please welcome the team of Turkey.